If you've ever wanted to become a monster hunter, wearing a shady cape and hat, while literally being stalked by ghosts, well then that very specific need may be filled by the incredible adventures of Van Helsing, a new action RPG by Neocore Games. In this game you play, surprise surprise, Van Helsing. But not the old guy, no, you're his son, and you must do what you do best, kick some monster ass. But is the incredible adventures of Van Helsing a solid dungeon crawling, enemy slaying experience, or is it more of a monster itself? Mighty creatures control us from above. In the incredible adventures of Van Helsing, you play as the son of the previous legendary monster hunter after receiving a request for help. Set in a 19th century Eastern Europe, where magic and mad science is running rampant, as you do, you must make a name for yourself, dispatching the evils that threaten the existence of mankind. And those evils mostly come in the form of weird scientific abominations. The actual story in The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing isn't anything special or memorable. It does the job. And although the main character and his ghostly companion Katarina do have quite a number of amusing lines, nothing here will ever amaze you or blow you away. But what will blow you away is the great atmosphere of the game. Graphically, The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing is quite a beauty to withhold, and the attention to detail within the maps is quite nice. The music accompanying you on your journey is beautiful and the voice acting of the main characters is quite nicely done. It is easily the highlight of the game, and very rarely am I as amazed by the atmosphere in an action RPG as I have been in The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. But as well done as the voice acting of the two main characters, and the music is, this sadly can't be said of any of the special effects. Guns sound pathetic, abilities sound underwhelming at best, and there is this one rather obtrusive splatter sound whenever you blow up enemies into pieces of meat. No, the sound effects don't do the game and the otherwise great atmosphere justice. Sadly, the sound effects are quite crucial for the combat experience. The combat, that is otherwise quite quick, suffers from lacking any impact whatsoever, due to the sound effects sounding as underwhelming as they do and there being no kick behind a gunshot or sword slash. The combat never connects or never feels great. Again, it is nicely fast, but it is devoid of any impact. Combat itself is either the melee or ranged. There are no classes in this game and you are, whether single player or online, playing as the one and only Van Helsing. Van Helsing has quite an elaborate range of passives and skills to learn. There are attributes gained every level that must be distributed, reputation levels, perks and when it comes to passive upgrades, there is plenty of it. The skill tree is divided into three tabs, one for melee oriented combat, one for ranged combat and one for auras and little extra skills. Within these melee and ranged trees you can go down three different routes each and skills themselves can be upgraded to gain a few different passive effects. On paper it sounds as if there is quite a lot to do here but in the end the game certainly suffers from a lack of variation in active abilities. You can switch between melee and ranged on the fly, but in the end you'll focus on one or the other. There are very few actual active abilities and the passive upgrades that you have to apply mid-combat don't have any visual indication and aren't highly creative, therefore never breaking the monotony of the lack of different abilities. Additionally, weapon types come in four different versions, dual wielding two pistols, or a rifle for ranged, and dual wielding two swords, or a greatsword for melee. Again, this pretty much comes down to melee versus ranged, as the actual weapon types have very little differences among them and are far too similar to feel different. The game itself boasts a rather long campaign that doesn't have any randomized maps, but does have a good length and will, depending on your difficulty, last about 10 hours at minimum. A good campaign with plenty of different locations and solid enemy variety ranging from mechanical soldiers to everyone's favorite and crucial action RPG enemies, giant spiders. Lastly, there is also the matter of multiplayer, and I wish this worked better. As it stands, it is largely broken. Neocore has in the last few days made a good effort in trying to get rid of these issues experienced by players, but as it stands it is likely far too laggy and unstable for anyone to enjoy multiplayer. At launch the game was plagued by frequent disconnections and progress would often not be saved, not to mention map transitions would completely break the game. 
These issues have largely been patched out, but as it stands, it is still incredibly laggy, and I could not in any of the past few days play a good multiplayer match. Multiplayer itself would potentially allow you to play with upward of 4 players in one match, and everyone would sadly still be playing the same Van Helsing character, with each their own Ghost Companion. On that note, the Ghost Companion is a welcome addition to the game and grants you additional combat buffs, can fight in either melee or ranged stance herself, has her own inventory and attributes, and plus whenever you're feeling thirsty, you can order her to get some more potions. If you trust a ghost to do your shopping, of course. The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing is a flawed game. It has an amazing and incredible atmosphere and looks visually stunning with good music and solid voice acting, but the combat is very lacking. Although it is fast, there is no impact to speak of and with very little active ability variety, it becomes quite repetitive. Single player has a good length and is probably worth the money, the maps and enemies are nicely varied and due to the atmosphere it is still largely enjoyable to go through it on your own, well on your own with an interesting ghost companion that is. If you were planning on getting this for multiplayer, I would definitely stay clear of this for the moment. Not only is there very, very little reason to actually do multiplayer, as there are no classes or abilities that complement each other or elaborate mechanics of any sort, it simply doesn't work as of right now. The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing gets a 6.5 out of 10. A decent, above average game that fans of the genre might find enjoyable enough to play the single player for. My name's Ben Haas, and I'll see you guys on the next review.